Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. This is the uh, first video I've done in, gee whiz, I don't know, many, many months. I used to do uh, daily videos, post them on Memory People uh, for the newer members that didn't know, and then I kind of got away from that because I was having difficulty getting them posted, so I'm going to try to get through this one and see what happens. I wanted to talk about something that's uh, come up many, many times on memory people and, and also uh, people ask me at my speaking engagements and it's about driving and uh, you know should the person with dementia drive and such a hard question to answer it really is but uh, matter of fact I'm doing a radio show this Monday in, out of Tampa Bay with uh, Kim Linder and that's the subject driving um, strangest thing with me is uh, I, I still drive and yet there's people who've never met me, don't know me don't know anything about me say that I shouldn't, it's just amazing and, and, and that alone is the stigma of this disease uh, some people think if you've got dementia you shouldn't drive, well that's absurd it, 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 for everyone this disease is different now, when I say I drive, that doesn't mean I, I, I drive normally. You know, I, I maybe drive my vehicle by myself once or twice a week, short distances, 10, 15 miles, something like that, here around town. I don't have many places to go, and I don't go many places. I've, I've told people forever that uh, when I was in law enforcement and EMS for many, many years, 24 years, I had to drive for a living and I got tired of it and Phyllis June has drove us wherever we go for a long time, 10 years or longer. Whenever we go anywhere, she drives because I just got tired of driving. So uh, driving is not a real issue for me, but uh, it irritates me as a patient when someone tells me or I read that uh, a dementia patient shouldn't be driving because that's, that's just not the truth. Um, now, obviously, there are some patients that shouldn't be driving. There's going to come a time when, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> there's going to come a time when I can't drive either. But uh, it's it's that's Phil June's job to, to recognize that. Uh, I I read I read before where you know, well, should you be driving? Would you drive with your with your kids in a car, your grandkids? Well, I drive all the time. Well, not all the time, but a couple of times two or three times a month with my grandkids in a car and or truck and it don't matter i you know i can drive <laughs> uh I, I don't know it's in your long-term memory i guess or something or it just hasn't affected me yet but but uh this this stigma of having dementia and you can't drive is just this is just crazy uh, now obviously like i say in the later stages it's going to be a problem and and it's up to you the caregiver to uh, recognize that and, and uh, take take action. One of the most difficult things to do is take somebody's license away from them. I know this for a fact because, when, like I said, when I was in law enforcement, I did that on several occasions. A uh, uh, person be elderly or whatever, and they, they have an accident, and uh, obviously it was their fault. And, and what I did was uh, I... Uh, I, I sent their uh, driver's license, I, I called it into the dispatch, and then when I got back on station, I would uh, send that into the DMV and, and request that they be retested. And whatever come of that, I never know, because it doesn't matter, it's none of my business, but uh, it was my job as a law enforcement officer, when, when I seen somebody that was obviously wasn't capable of driving, you know, I can't just take their license, <laughs> that's not the way it works. So I did the correct thing, and I get a hold of the DMV and tell them, you know, this happened, and in my opinion, this, this uh, person needs to be retested or whatever. Now, in the case of dementia, uh, I, I, t I tell people all the time, let the doctor be the bad guy here. Um, you know, some, some of these patients are adamant that they can still drive when they can't. You know, that's just the disease talking, and, uh, you know, it just can't be so uh just just tell them that the doctor uh wants to see him and and uh wants to go over 
some questions about their driving ability or something like that. You know, make the doctor be the bad guy. Obviously, it should be the doctor and make that decision anyway. You know, I mean, takes it out of your hands. It's it's very difficult to take someone's driver's license away, and when and if and when that time comes. One of the main things you got to remember is you you can't let these people sit at home day after day, hour after hour. Uh, if you've got to make a plan or have a plan, make arrangements to where the, where these people can can go where they need to go. You know, um, it's it's very hard. I keep saying to take somebody's license, but there's a lot there's a lot involved because. Uh, Having these people just sit at home with time on their hands is horrible. So, uh, you know, when moms when moms used to go on and and go on to the hairdresser every week or every two weeks or whatever, and 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 she can no longer do that, then you got to make arrangements to have that done for her. I uh, I don't know. Um, a lot of people think, for some reason, that. Uh, when you're first diagnosed, I've even heard it say that some states in America that if you're diagnosed with dementia, you're, you're not allowed to drive. Now, I don't believe that, but maybe that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. I know it's not in Ohio. and uh, But here, here's what I tell people. If, if you think... If you think or if you post on memory, people, there's a problem with your loved one driving. There is, because if you, <laughs> once it gets to that point, you know, you've noticed it and stuff, it, it's, time to, it's time to do something about it. And uh, I, I contacted my insurance company because I, uh, I was concerned having a diagnosis and be involved in an accident. You know, I don't know what would happen. I know one thing for sure, I'll get sued. That's, that's a given because people will sue anybody for anything nowadays, and that's just the way it goes. So I contacted my insurance company, and of course this is a, everybody knows everybody in this town, and told them the situation with my diagnosis and, and what, what's going to happen. They said, well, nothing. We're certainly not going to drop you as a, uh, you know, off your insurance. And, uh, but they also told me if I was indeed involved in an accident, be it my fault or not my fault, then I would be dropped because there would have to be a claim made. And then, you know, it would be obvious <coughs> to the uh, other person, excuse me, that was involved in the accident or the law enforcement or whatever that I am indeed diagnosed with dementia and, and uh, they would drop me from... Uh, you know, it'd just be too big a liability. But until that happens, uh, I am carried on insurance. So, uh, but once again, every insurance is different too. I don't, I don't, I just know that's how mine is. Um, one of the things to remember is everybody knows this. Uh, people are so happy in this in this country. They always have been. They always will be. And if your loved one is driving and causes an accident, God forbid, there's, you know, bodily you know, people were hurt or, or, or even killed, it's not going to be good, you know. Uh, you better believe it's going to come out because uh, they're going to get an attorney and they're going to see, and that attorney's going to find out that this person does indeed or has indeed been diagnosed with dementia, and <laughs> it's not going to be good. Uh, you don't have any defense, you know. Um, so just... Uh, it's very difficult the driving situation, but it's it's uh, also it's 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 a very it's an individual thing, you know. Uh, I've been struggling with this disease for probably six seven years now, and uh, but I still drive, you know. I, I don't have a bit of trouble driving. Uh, it, it's difficult when people tell me that I shouldn't be driving because they don't know me. <laughs> they don't they don't know me at all. Um, Occasionally, maybe once a month or so, we'll go somewhere. And when we do, and then I'll drive. And Phyllis June gets a, you know, I want her to see how my driving is, and it's fine. You know, it ain't like she's scared when I'm driving or anything like that. Uh, it, it's, it's it's just uh, there. I know people have talked about there being uh, tests for uh, special tests for people with dementia to take for. Uh, to retake their driver's license or be tested. And I, I don't believe that either. 
it could be true, but I don't believe it because if, if in case that is true, that's discrimination. Uh, you can't run me through a, a, a different set of driving tests or questions that deal with cognitive issues when, when nobody else has to do that. You know, that's discrimination. That's just plain and simple. You have to run me through the same tests that everybody else is run through. Um, it, it's, people got to realize driving is not a memory thing. <laughs> it's just not. It's instilled in my long-term memory for one thing. And another thing is, you know, I don't pull up to a stop sign and not know what it says or not know what to do or a green light and just sit there. I mean, if that was the case, then that's a problem, you know. Um, do I get confused and, and, and things like that? Well, sure I do when I'm driving. But it's no big deal. You know, I never get lost. I've lived in this town all my life, and, and I sooner or later I see things that I recognize, but my biggest issue with driving is when, I'm, when I go from point A to point B in between, I usually forget where I'm going <laughs> or what I'm going there for, or maybe both. And that has to do with the memory issue. It has nothing to do with driving. It has nothing to do with me getting there. It has to do with me remembering what I'm going there for because it's a short-term memory thing. It's a stigma of this disease to think you've got dementia and you can't drive. You know, it, it just really is. Um, but but throw it on your throw it on your doctor. May, let him be the bad guy, and and just remember that if you do uh, decide to get down that path, and your loved one can no longer, if you're worried about them driving, then uh, you, you do need to take action because you certainly don't want to, uh, want them to cause an accident. And and, and I, I know this one lady in our support group. Um, she was further along, uh, maybe maybe mid stages, I guess, and uh, with uh, Alzheimer's, and and uh, she went to get her hair done, and when she left there, she was on her way home, and she plowed into somebody, hit somebody in the rear, and uh, she was nowhere near where she's supposed to be, and then, of course, after she hit somebody, you know, the <laughs> stress and everything started. When law enforcement got there, she didn't know nothing where she was at, what was going on, or anything, and it was a mess. So, um, I, I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a, driving is, is an individual thing. You, you can't, you can't lump people all together that has dementia and say, well, they shouldn't be driving because they got dementia. That's just absurd because uh, uh, it's, it's an individual thing. Uh, I, I choose not to drive. Hardly, because I just I got tired of driving through the years that I had to. So even before I was diagnosed, I didn't drive hardly ever. Now I drive less. Like I said I might drive once or twice a week, and it's very, very local, 8, 10, 12 miles or something. So, But anyway, I wanted to touch on driving, uh, do a video, and, and see if I could get through this. More or less, it was for myself to see if I could do one of these videos again. Like I said, I haven't done one for many, many months, so... If this works, maybe I'll, I'll try to continue these. So uh, have a good day and uh, see you.